Hello everybody, nice to see you again. Last time we did some kind of uh, Dr. Nappy's machine blow away and we talked about this gun and that gun was a uh, Nappy something 2000, right? I don't remember the actual name but it was Nappy something 2000. Do you remember? Maybe you can uh, like comment it on the my brother's other videos so that I can see it because I'm able to watch that, you know? So, and, uh, chapter 18 was some kind of, like, really lame for me, but you could be different. It could be fun too, but for me it was lame because it was only one sentence and three words. In one sentence, it's only three words, okay? So, let me tell you what it was. They got away. Done. There was no way, like, no word done. But they got away. That's the sentence and that's the end of chapter 18. Isn't it really, really, really impressive? Like one chapter's like uh, sentences are only one sentence. Is that a lot? Not at all, right? So like they captured the Dr. Nappy somehow. Uh, Captain Urpen shot his underpants to Dr. Nappy's head. And Dr. Nappy would be really uncomfortable, isn't it? So, let's see what they will do with him. Let's start. Chapter 19, back to school. Wait, back to school? Then does that mean like Captain Pants will be turned into like Mr. Krupp again? Then like they will be dead meat, you remember? <laughs> but... I'm sure they're gonna make some solution and because there are more books you know and what do you think maybe you remember the last time like not the last time but like last 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 last, last I don't remember when but like it was from our videos they made a solution well you can think of the solution while watching this video and I'm gonna mention it like almost like the end of this video maybe okay so George Harold and Captain Pence made a quick stop outside the police station they tied Dr. Nappy to a lamp spot and attached a note to him there said Captain Pence that ought to explain everything they are smart but ca like policies are dumb they said Please don't commit any crimes till we return. Thank you. Do you think the crimers will listen to that? Not at all. What do you think? If you were a crimer, uh, you're not, but like if you were, then what would you do? You will commit crimes, right? And like they're smart because like they tied uh, Dr. Nappy and like they put it a note and note says arrest me. And you know what, like, George and Harold, when they make their own comics, they are confused with, like, arrest. Sometimes they say A, and they, like, A, and uh, they make a space, and then rest, like, you rest things like this. But, they write it correct here, right? Arrest. They're good at writing, like, even before. They're good at writing before. Because like, oh wait, but like before, before they made a comic book, but like there, the um, exciting was like uh, there was no S, and like from nice it should be C, but S, right? If you remember it, it means like you're really good at remembering. Okay, so okay, then Jordan Harold led Captain Pants back to Jerome Horowitz Elementary School. Why are we going here? asked Captain Underpants. Well, said George, you have to do some undercover work. Yeah, said Harold, reaching into his backpack. Put this clothes on and make it snappy. Don't forget your hair, said George. That's a toupee, right? The hair cannot be fall out. And like in the movie, <laughs> he got really angry and he did this and his hair just floated and just went down. It's funny you should watch this like the movie of it it's really funny you know 
And Captain Underpants quickly got dressed behind some bushes. Well, how do I look? He asked. Pretty good, said George. Now try to look really angry. Captain Underpants made the nastiest fate he could. Okay, now everybody, can you make the nastiest face that you have ever been? Like, you have ever been the, like, the nastiest face that you can make. Okay, so, you know, said Harold, he kinda looks like Mr. Currup. Harold, whispered George, he is Mr. Currup. Oh yeah, said Harold, I almost forgot. Before long, they were all back inside Mr. Currup's office. Okay, Captain Underpants, said George, you are now Mr. Currup. Snap your fingers, whispered Harold. Oh yeah, said George, snap. You are now Mr. Currup. Who's Mr. Currup? asked Captain Underpants. Oh no, cried Harold, it's not working. The two boys tried again and again to dehypnotize Captain Underpants, but nothing seemed to work. Hmm, said Harold, let me, let me see the instruction manual for the ring. George checked his trouser pocket. Um, said George, I think I lost it. You what? cried Harold. The two boys searched practically through the office, but the 3D hypono ring instruction manual was nowhere to be found. Never mind, said George, I have an idea. He removed the flowers from a large base in the corner. So he threw all the flowers away. Boom. Then what about the people who has allergies? Eh, let's not think about that. Let's say they don't have flower allergy. Okay, so then he poured out all the water over Captain Erpen's head. Why what did you do that for? cried Harold. I saw him do this in a cartoon once, said George, so it's gonna work. Well, let me, like, tell you something. So, they believe cartoon because they are a cartoon. Wait, don't you think it makes a little sense? They believe cartoon because they are from cartoon. And in cartoon, everything works. That's why, right? Yeah, maybe that's why. And he was smiling, and his face are getting... A uh, nasty. Let's see what happens next. After a few minutes, Mr. Crab slowly came to. What's going on here? He demanded. And why am I all wet? <laughs> George and Harold had never been so glad to see Mr. Crab in all their lives. I'm so happy I could cry, said Harold. Well, you're gonna cry when I give that videotape to the football team, shouted Mr. Crab. I've had it with you too. Dear dead meat, I think. Principal Carp took the videotape out of his filling cabinet. You guys are dead meat, he sneered. So, do you want me to tell you the solution that they made and they're happy about it? You know why? Okay, so when you go back, 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 there is a... Uh, like in the there they first hypnotized them and George got the videotape and then Harold put at her sister singing a purple dragon or something so he put it there and he went out right so and now let's just continue he stormed out of his office with the video and headed towards the gym George and Harold smiled Wait till the football team sees that video, said Harold. Yeah, said George. I sure hope they like singing purple dragons. Purple dragons can sing? And is there purple dragons even? Well, this is a cartoon, so we should understand. Oh, and I found the like biggest problem in this book. You know what? Maybe you've noticed that. I will give you uh, one minute to do it. Or pause if you need more time. Okay, let's just say one minute is ended. This is long, the the shows are long, so like it will come till here, here. But in here, it just like uh, the clothes that I'm wearing. 
he has a tie and his color is different but he is it's a shorty it's short so that's a magic no maybe that's their mistake <laughs> yeah because like all here he's with the shorty and maybe they're uh sorry mistaken with this right uh, these it should be like only this and this Hey, look, said George. I found this 3D Hypono Ring instruction manual. It was in my shirt pocket, not my trouser pocket. Well, throw that thing away, said Harold. We'll never need it again. I certainly hope not, said George. George is really good at basketball, I think. He just threw it backwards and it just got into the trash bin. You know, like, it's hard when you're far away. And we do some kind of that playing things, you know? Like when we just like when we draw something and it's not that cool, we just like make them as a ball and throw in a trash bin. Boom. And I do that sometimes too, but it uh like it's not working every time because I'm actually far away from the bin, so have you tried that? It's pretty fun when you do that, but uh don't do that. It's not that nice. But like at school when you just do that and like sometimes when I am kind of angry I put like I make them as a ball and just throw it in the trash bin do you do that sometimes it makes me feel a little better anyway oh and like let's read this paper the manual so let's read the warning so whatever you do don't put water on anybody's head when they are in a trance this will cause slip back and forth from trance to reality whenever they hear the sound of fingers snapping so wait 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 that means when they just when like anybody snaps he will be kept in their pants that's not so good huh so chapter 20 the end finally the end Whoa, really the end Okay, so like they're singing and like la la la, we love Boomer, la la. What are you? I think that's from the purple dragon, right? The they like the said, that's purple dragons. Maybe that's a uh, kind like that's a uh, song, songs of real likes. So things that Jerem Horvitz Elementary School were never quite the same after that fateful day. The football team enjoyed Mr. Krabs' video so much that they changed their name from the Knuckleheads to the Purple Dragons sing along friends. The name change didn't go down too well with the fans, but hey, who's going to argue with a bunch of linebackers? They look pretty strong, you know? This thing. Oh, but like, in my... I think like, it's not their muscles. It's only their, uh, some kind of uh, armor. They put the armor there because they so that they won't be hurt. And their shoes are kind of um, freaking me out because it has some kind of sharp things in their shoes. Creepy. So George and Harold went back to their old ways, pulling pranks, cracking dorks, and making new comic books. They had to keep an eye on Mr. Curb though because for some strange reason every time he heard the sound of finger snapping, Snap! Mr. Curb turned back into... You know who? Oh no! cried Harold. Here we go again! said George. troll So, he turns back into Captain Underpants again. Even when someone else snaps, because uh, from here, the manual, it says like that. Oh, and you know what? When the book ends this all the time, Harold says, oh no, and George says, here we go again, all the time. In every book that I have read, read, sorry. So, like, they always say that, so, like, you should check it all the time. Make a note of that if you want, okay? So, we're finally done reading this book. Cool, right? We finally finished reading this book. And then we'll start reading this book, the, t the Attack of Talking Toilets. We're gonna start it in the next time. So, it will be kind of fun. And, like, let me give you a little spoiler. This 
kids that hit this toilet thingy says eat them up all the time. Eat them up? Then it means they will eat somebody? Creepy. But it's gonna be fun. Really. And like, there will be, like, they will show a power of Captain Underpants. He's wedgie power, you know? He really has wedgie power. It will be fun, okay? Wait for the next video. So thank you for listening and see you next time. Bye.